Welcome back everybody. Thanks for joining me. Uh, today's video is sponsored by my dear friends at KEH Camera. They're sponsoring this entire series about the Chillicothe Project. We'll talk more about them at the end of this video. In our ongoing conversation about this Chillicothe Project, I really want to talk about, you know, kind of crafting a personal project and showing you know, what the actual regular sort of work is behind the scenes of working on a project like that. And the importance of research cannot be understated. And that's really what I want to talk about today. It's not just about the pretty pictures. It's about how you can string them together to actually create something that shows a little bit more than maybe what's visually captured. So as I've been thinking about these pictures, and yes, it's still mostly just thinking about them because um, all of the pictures are still, they're somewhere in this giant, giant bag and on the floor too. And I still don't know if I'm ready to actually see those pictures yet, but we'll be talking all about that next week. So keep an eye out for that one. But as I've been thinking about these pictures and inevitably like what it's going to become, you know, a book, it's a different process now from what I worked on before with friend of mine. It was just a totally different, you know, way of going about, you know, getting to the end result. And we'll talk about that in a second. But I've been trying to figure out, like, what can I do to kind of guide me? And I, you know, first would go to some of my photo books that I would have on my shelf. And I would look at, you know, photo heroes of mine. And I would think, okay, what did they do? How did they get to this particular project? What led them to sort of frame it around this, you know? And it's all just inspiration, looking for any anything as a place to start. I mean, at this point, with photography especially, everything has already been done. So when you're trying to think like where to start, everything has already been done. So really, you just have to find something to get going. And in that process is where you can kind of continue to tweak it and mold it into something of your own. And trying to find a way to like frame everything together and tie it all together, for me, that's been important because I know I'm going to continue making pictures in Chillicothe for the rest of my life and I want to be able to like continue having this conversation with Chillicothe with my camera in that time. I, I don't want to, you know, it's one of those projects that will never end. So I don't want to wait until, you know, I'm already done, you know, and I've lived my entire life and then I make a book or something. I, I've already made friend of mine. I want to approach, you know, photographing Chillicothe and uh, you know, having that kind of conversation. I want to approach that in a number of different ways uh, in different books and just different mediums as well. So for me, it's like trying to choose an idea. It's like I have a list of all kinds of different ideas of how I could approach this or, or what kind of elements I could pull in to kind of guide the story. What can I pull from the history, the natural just geography of our area, the population and the people here? All of these different things can be combined. They can be focused on individually. There's just infinite possibilities. And that's what makes, you know, this kind of thing so fun because you have full freedom. But with Friend of Mine, it was shot in such a different way and it came together in such a different way that um, it's just a totally different process now working on something with a book in mind. Whereas Friend of Mine, it was really just a collection of pictures of me just walking around or driving around and sort of responding to you know, just anything that felt like home. It wasn't until one day I saw, you know, all of the pictures together and realized like, oh, okay, there's, there's something common here in all of these. And it all kind of feels like I'm looking for, you know, something in particular, that kind of feeling of, of whatever it was that made me feel like Chillicothe, like whatever made me feel like home. And especially at that time and just who I was as a person at that time, how I felt about Chillicothe, um, you know, a friend of mine was the first time I ever really put personal pictures out there for people. You know, I did a little zine before that, but, um, you know, in terms of like a full project or something focused, that was the first for me. And, you know, it was the subject that I sort of found my love of photography with. It was the stuff that I would always be shooting, just driving or, or walking around. And so I think in terms of like the authorship of those photos or, or my perspective or point of view on, you know, Chillicothe and my relationship with it at that time is so different from what it is now and also just who I am now and how I approach photography, how I want to approach making books. It's a totally different process and a totally different feel. And for me, having some kind of thing to frame it around has been really important in terms of like guiding what I work on because I don't want to just be out there spinning my wheels 
and hoping that, you know, there's a common theme there, that's not a bad way to work. And in fact, I sort of am doing that with a different project, but this is totally different. Um, not only is it just, you know, one of the projects of Chillicothe that I want to do, like I said, I know I'm going to continue doing this for the rest of my life. So there's no hurry on me making a Chillicothe book because it's going to be one of many probably. But in order to, you know, make videos about photography like this, where we can just talk about photography and less about, you know, comparing cameras, uh, in order to do that, that's why KEH is supporting this series. And so for me to be consciously working on it month after month, KEH is really helping not just sponsor this YouTube channel and this series, but obviously this project as well. They're allowing me the time to really work on it. So. I'm trying to take that into consideration as well as I work on this. I want to make sure that I'm giving this a focused and intentional effort so that I'm not just spinning my wheels on someone else's dime because that's not the way to work ever. But I also think having a deadline and, you know, having someone there to kind of keep the project going, it's also been helpful for me because with everything going on in life, it would be so easy for me to be like, yeah, I'll make that book in a couple of years, but you got to do the work. That's what it's all about. And uh, trying to kind of find some guidance on this sort of thing and find some kind of framing, I thought the best place to do that would be at the library. So last month on Valentine's Day, Molly and I got a quick break from the moving chaos and had a nice date at the library and Paper City Coffee, which was just the best. While we were there, I brought in a few copies of friend of mine and gave those to the the library so that way they can live locally here forever and that was really important to me because the whole project I mean that's what it was about the beginning of the book says for the future of Chillicothe because putting out this second edition putting it out proper and the right way delivering it the way I really wanted to um, that's what it was all about it was about making something that the future of Chillicothe could look back and, and see all of that you know it was something that was preserved but I found a ton of stuff, I made copies of all kinds of things, and it's already given me little bits of information and things that I can pull from and sort of a trail to follow. All of these little bits of information, um, some of the stuff I probably wouldn't have just stumbled into online, so being physically there at the library was definitely the right way to go. And one of the women working there at the library was super helpful as well. I told her all about the project and, you know, a friend of mine as well, and just sort of, you know, told her what I was there to do. And she gave me recommendations as well. Well, which were super super helpful I've been trying to ask anyone I know who has been living here their whole life um, just for any sort of guidance or ideas um, anything that maybe I'm not already aware of or just things that I'm not thinking of just gathering as much information as I can and figuring out what's useful what isn't and that information itself Keep in mind, you don't have to, you know, share that information in the pictures. It doesn't have to become context for the project. Uh, it doesn't have to be detected, detected, having tick flashbacks. <laughs> It doesn't have to be depicted in the work at all that, you know, any of that context or research was used. It can be totally just for you to use. It doesn't have to become part of the project. It's just giving you a place to start. What I stumble across and find by following these little trails from the research, it could lead to the best work I ever make, or it could just be a complete bust and a waste of my time. I ain't gonna find out unless I find out. So do your research, uh, just give yourself a little bit of something to work with. It can go a long way, uh, especially if you've been in sort of a creative rut or uh, you're just tired of looking, just take a break, do some research and uh, that should help. But thank you all so much for joining me today. I'd love to hear all of your thoughts in the comments down below and keep the conversation going. But a huge, huge thanks to my dear friends at KEH Camera for their support on this channel and especially this series. KEH Camera has been buying, selling, and trading used photography gear for over 40 years now. Whether you need a camera body, a lens, a tripod, a camera bag, or one of those random odds and ends or parts for some of those older cameras, there's always a good chance they have it at KEH because their inventory is massive. They also have a risk-free 21-day return policy for thousands of their items, along with a 180-day warranty included. If you need to trade in or sell any of your gear, they have a quoting system on their website that's available 24-7, or you can even schedule a video chat with one of their buyers. Be sure to use the affiliate links below anytime you're shopping with KEH to support this channel. It goes a long way at no extra cost to you. For 5% off your order or for a 5% bonus on your quote when you're selling your gear, 
make sure you use the codes on the screen. These do change every so often, so make sure you're using the up-to-date code and don't miss out on any of the savings. Thank you again to KEH Camera for all of their support on this channel.